so I did a trailer review on Leave the World Behind. At that time, the review was based on the trailer and the novel. Now, I researched the novel. However, I didn't read the novel. But after my trailer review and after watching this film, I did get a few things wrong, but it did go the way it was described in several detailed synopsis. So no big surprises until you actually understand what has happened. On a scale from one to five, I would give it a three and a half, which is above average, but that is only because of the cast. Because the cast is this film. It does several things very well, but I have a lot of problems with this film. By the way, there will be spoilers in this review, so if you don't want to know what happens, you may want to wait to watch the film first. I do find it very interesting that Mr. Obama was involved in this project. You know, a cryptic messenger or media manipulator. This is a person who reveals information or hints about secret plans through various forms of media, such as movies and television, with the intention of creating fear or anxiety. In fictional context, characters who engage in this behavior might be referred to as masterminds, puppet masters, or manipulative figures. After all, what you see in this film, the truth is likely to be much stranger. Do you want to know how things go down in real life? There are countless examples all through history. Leave the World Behind, starring Julia Roberts, Mahershala Ali, Ethan Hawke, Mahela Harold, Farrah McKenzie, Charlie Evans, Kevin Bacon. And they all did a fine job, an exceptional job. I don't know if they were trying to win Oscars here, but in some scenes there seemed to be a bit of overacting. And that tells me that the centerpiece for this film is the characters. The scenario is just there to showcase their personalities. Now I laid out a lot of this film in my trailer review, so here I really just want to focus on the events that occur in the film. First of all, Barack and Michelle Obama gave their hand in making this film as executive producers, which may mean that they only participated in this film financially or they could have taken some creative control in the project. In this case, it is said that Obama worked on the script. So we can assume that this is the Obama's movie. Next, this movie is very messagey. Too messagey. I understand predictive programming, the drip effect, subliminal messaging, cryptic messaging. And this film, every scene feels like a riddle. Every scene feels like it has some hidden message. If this movie was in black and white, it would feel like a Twilight Zone episode, but the thing is, everything that occurs is grounded in the reality of war. So, the first event here, I believe, is the blackout. And, of course, they chose New York City as ground zero, yet we don't know how far this event has spread. I want to tell you guys something. If the U.S. was ever invaded, there is going to be a blackout. Whether the enemy caused the blackout or we shut down the power. There are blackout measures that the country will take that are set up to actually protect us. For example, one of the main reasons for blackout measures during war is to reduce the visibility of cities and targets from the air. 
In the past, the absence of visible lights on the ground made it difficult for pilots to identify and accurately target their objectives. By minimizing the visibility of cities and towns at night, it became more difficult for enemy aircraft to target populated areas. This was especially important during World War II when major cities were subjected to extensive bombing campaigns. By concealing military installations, movements, and activities, the reduced visibility made it harder for enemy intelligence to gather information about the location and scale of military operations. Blackouts could disrupt the navigation of enemy aircraft and hinder their ability to find specific targets, but at the same time, we lose our navigation ability. So, a satellite going out that could target us would have to be taken offline somehow so that the enemy could not use it against us. The darkness of blackouts does give the civilian population the opportunity to move around in the dark with a better feeling of security from the enemy because you are able to move with more concealment, especially if you know the land and layout of the city better than any foreign enemy because you live there. And when you don't have resources being invested into keeping the power on, you can allocate those resources to other things people will need. So that's blackouts, which are inevitable with almost any disaster. Now, blackouts alone don't usually cause people to lose their minds. Most of us have been through several extended blackouts. It really only becomes a problem when you can't heat your home when it affects the food and water, when it affects gas. In the film, during or immediately following the blackout, there is the loss of the GPS signal. The global positioning system signal can be disrupted or go out for various reasons. Solar flares and solar storms can release high energy particles that interfere with GPS signals. Weather conditions such as heavy rain, snow, or dense cloud cover can attenuate GPS signals. Tall buildings, mountains, and dense forests can block or reflect GPS signals, causing signal degradation or loss. Technical malfunctions or software glitches on GPS satellites. Ground control systems or receivers can cause signal disruptions. The satellite could be at the end of its life. In war, the same rules apply as they do with the power beam. Uh, deliberate interference with the GPS signals, known as jamming, can be caused by adversaries seeking to disrupt military operations or by individuals attempting to interfere with navigation systems. Military forces heavily rely on GPS for accurate navigation for targeting systems, including precision guided munitions. Some military communication systems use GPS for synchronization and timing. GPS is vital for logistics and supply chain management in the military. Disruption of the GPS signal can complicate the tracking of supplies, equipment, troop movements, impacting the efficiency of logistical operations. Unmanned aerial vehicles and other autonomous systems often rely on GPS for navigation and control. Sometimes you can have spoofing going on, which involves sending false signals to a GPS receiver, tricking it into providing inaccurate position information. In a military context, Forces may intentionally deny or degrade GPS signals in a specific area to impede the navigation and targeting capabilities of adversaries. So in that scenario, we should all expect for the power to go out and for the GPS signal to go out. Now, I want to talk about the animals, because in the film we see the deer gathering to stop and stare like a bunch of creepy stalkers and besides the obvious disruption and migration patterns that's how they explain this you can tell these deer are in some type of zone 
It's like a deer stuck in the headlights. And they just stand there and stare, dozens of them together. War, of course, is going to scare animals away. The movement of humans from the city into rural areas will cause animals to move. Explosions, chemicals, contamination. There are several things that will cause this. But what would affect the mind of the deer? The behavior? The same thing that could cause loud, penetrating noises. The same thing that could cause people to feel sick or start losing their teeth, which happens to one of the children in the film. Energy weapons. Frequency weapons. That's an easy one, right? Not so apparent at first. Folks, remember... There were all these animals that were recorded walking around in circles. Sheep, cattle, insects, etc. Could be something to do with communications such as 5G. Now there's another scene with the animals where they step outside and spot a bunch of flamingos in a swimming pool close to New York City. So we know from this that Whatever is happening has affected everything as far as at least the Caribbean. Here's the problem with that. And this is something I think should be further discussed because there are certain realities to using energy weapons to cause people harm. First of all, in war, they have humanitarian, ethical, international laws that forbid the use of these types of weapons, making them illegal to have and make of course, they still make them. The problem is, if someone used an energy weapon on us after everything is over with, somebody is going to have to explain the energy weapons and why they were used. It's similar to a war crime. Plus, it's like letting the cat out of the bag, exposing government secrets. Then the enemy becomes aware you have these weapons and will use them. I guess the idea of war is you can't intentionally kill people, but you are free to destroy everything around them to settle an issue. And then there are rules for engagement, of course, right? Now, there is a scene where what looks like a large cargo ship loses control and crashes ashore on a beach. And you have airplanes falling out of the sky. Now, in theory, yes, potential... Cybersecurity threats targeting the aircraft's systems could lead to unauthorized control inputs. Otherwise, aside from any natural disaster, it would take a serious malfunction for a plane to take a nosedive suddenly. Or it would have to be shot down. Or the plane could have run into a flock of birds. And this scenario would be done by an enemy to disrupt travel, keep everyone where they are, and to disrupt supply chains, making it hard to move equipment, weapons, food, etc. It's another one of those things you should expect in a war scenario. Unless it's a military craft, there probably won't be any planes taking off in the first place. There is a scene where a small airplane is dropping red flyers. A drone, I should say. Which really says a lot when we think about all the spraying of chemicals in the sky, on the farms, and in the streets. They literally sprayed pesticides on the streets of New York. Anybody remember that? They told people to stay in their homes because they were driving up and down the streets spraying chemicals. Poison. You can look that up. They said it was for mosquitoes. Mosquito control. At the same time... They fly planes, dumping millions of mosquitoes over certain areas. Genetically modified mosquitoes for everyone to enjoy. I mean, why should they keep all those mosquitoes to themselves, right? The movie hints at the enemy being multiple nations teaming up against us. Look, we don't control who owns the land. Powers and principalities do. They decide who goes to war. At the end, we get a scene where Manhattan is being bombed. So we figure out that this whole thing is a coordinated attack. Nope. 
No doomsday. Well, for some people it would be. Remember, folks, one of the things that keeps the U.S. intact or feared, I guess you could say, well, the reason you don't invade the U.S. and a few other countries in the world is because we have guns. Lots and lots of guns. Think about this. There are less than 10 countries in the world that have the constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Everyone else is under strict regulations and we are getting there. This is why preserving our gun rights is vital. How about some regime dragging everyone in your neighborhood out of their house in the middle of the night, lining up the people who live on that block outside under the street light in front of a firing squad? All because nobody had a gun. Look through history, this happens. The characters in this film are characters. They represent certain types of individuals intentionally. The tatted up, nose ring wearing, next generation angry person, Ruth, cute but annoying. Her presence is very scripted and it's like every scene she is in, she has a problem with it. Ethan Hawke's character is the soft, dumb beta Brad that just wants to relax. You have Julia Roberts' character, the angry misanthrope. You have the white-collar investment broker, I guess, the rational individual. The son in this seems to play the normie, the young, internet-addicted, lonely, horny teen boy. Then you have this thing called a little girl. I call her a thing because she ends up abandoning the entire family to go off and into some bunker to watch the TV show Friends while everyone is out risking their lives to find her. I mean, nobody is really a likable character here. But what keeps you interested in them is the film's ability to humanize them. A little tiny bit of each of them is in all of us. I guess when the shit hits the fan, we get to see who we truly are. Well, that's all for now, and there is more to come. I hope everyone is enjoying their holiday season so far. No matter how bleak things seem to be on the surface, we are going through changes and challenges. And in spite of all of this, remember to always stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.